Ladies and gentlemen, good evening news on Channel 2. Thank you for joining us. And we start with our news headlines. The Supreme Constitutional Court marks celebrations of the 50th anniversary of establishing the constitutional judiciary in Egypt. Egypt unveils a troop of ancient patterns excavated in Luxor. And hundreds gather in Lebanon for third day of protests. And now to the news in full. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi paid tribute to Supreme Constitutional Courts as providing legal protection to the public within supremacy of constitutional legitimacy while striking a balance between public rights and liberties on the one hand and the powers exercised by public authorities on the other. President al-Sisi made his remarks as this morning met a delegation of Constitutional Court chief judges who are in Egypt to ceremonially mark the golden jubilee of Egypt's constitutional judiciary. The president also held in great esteem Egypt's Supreme Constitutional Court as being a source of pride for him and the entire Egyptian people. He added that it commands vast experience as well as well-established and decades-long judicial traditions. The president referred to Egypt's Supreme Constitutional Court as being a redoubt of public rights and liberties which has addressed a multitude of hurdles in recent years in order to uphold principles of justice. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi asserted that fostered public awareness was indispensable to enhance law and judicial institutions to empower nations to effectively address threats to their very being at the forefront of these being terror and radicalism. The chief judge of the Supreme Constitutional Court highly evaluated President el-Sisi's keen interest in consolidating public awareness of the part played by constitutional courts to protect the fortunes of nations to bolster democracy and push development forward. Under the auspices of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the Supreme Constitutional Court marked the 50th anniversary of introducing constitutional judiciary in Egypt. 48 delegations representing Supreme Constitutional Courts in Arab, African and foreign countries this morning marked the start of three-day celebrations. Headed by Councillor Saeed Marai, the Supreme Constitutional Court is set to honor some of its former chief judges. Addressing the ceremony, Deputy Chief Justice Dr. Aydel Omar Shir Sharif lauded this day as historic, paying homage to the Supreme Constitutional Court is a pillar of justice, rights and equality. Nile International Senior Correspondent uh, Tagreed Hussain attended the ceremony and conducted this interview with Councillor Dr. Adil Omar Sharif, the Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt. On the occasion of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt celebrating the Golden Jubilee, we have all the honor and pleasure on the sidelines of the celebration to have with us uh, uh, Excellency Honorable Dr. Aydel Omar Sharif, who is the Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt. Uh, Honorable Dr. Sharif, thank you so much for uh, joining Nile TV International. It has been a wonderful celebration to come today and to celebrate together achievements of 50 years and looking forward to more thriving 50 years to come. Thank you very much and let me at the outset thank you for being with us, for covering the celebration. It's been a joyful event as you have just seen and I believe everybody here is really thrilled and happy of what they have seen. Uh, definitely the court throughout the march has been uh, in the hearts of all Egyptians and took great steps throughout the history of Egypt. We watched a beautiful documentary that has highlighted the march. If you would kindly highlight more on the remarkable steps throughout the history of the court. Well, I mean, the uh, Supreme Constitutional Court was only established about 50 years ago. Uh, nonetheless, the Egyptian judiciary ha is more deeply rooted than that, where they have a long his history extended for centuries. 
but the idea behind having a specialized court at this specific court has to do with the technicalities of uh, uh, enforcing the law, and technicalities of uh, exercising judicial review, and all these technicalities has to do with the uh, uh, appropriate enforcement of the rule of law in any given society that believes in democracy and enforce the uh, uh, standard being really adopted and enforced by civilized nations. And this is exactly what we do here in this court since it has been established for the past 50 years. We've been working with a lot of challenges and we've made uh, uh, and achieved a lot of achievement at the same time. So it's an ongoing journey wherein you really encounter difficulties day after day. Nonetheless, you exerting the most effort to render justice to the people, to the people of this country and to the humanity as well. Addressing the Supreme Constitutional Court, Minister of Endowments and Religious Affairs Dr. Muhammad Mukhtar Guma asserted that the state of law is the state of justice, otherwise turmoil prevail. He underscored that the law and the constitution are the main pillars of building any state, adding that both religion and law do strive for hard work and combating corruption. Minister of Justice, Councillor Mohammed Hossam Abdurrahim assured that the June 30th revolution constitution is highly expressive of the people's volition, which consolidates the Supreme Constitutional Court. For his part, Councillor Marai said that the Supreme Constitutional Court is the Constitution's guard that was approved by Egyptians, noting that the Supreme Constitutional Court is on its right path without any hesitation, holding the message of legitimacy at its forefront. Chief Judge Councillor Said Marai argued that the Supreme Constitutional Court was a safeguard unanimously approved by Egyptians. He noted that the Supreme Constitutional Court is on the right course without any hesitation, holding the message of legitimacy at its forefront. Egypt unveiled today the details of 30 ancient wooden coffins with mummies inside discovered in the southern city of Luxor in the biggest find of its kind in more than a century. Details. Egypt revealed today a rare trove of 30 ancient wooden coffins that have been well preserved over millennia in the archaeologically rich valley of the kings in Luxor. Antiquities Ministry officially unveiled the discovery made at as Hasif, a necropolis on the west bank of the Nile River, at a press conference against the backdrop of the Hatshepsut Temple. The head of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Dr. Mustafa Al-Waziri, told reporters that this is the first discovery in the area by dedicated Egyptian hands comprised of archaeologists, conservationists and workers, adding that the 30 ornately decorated coffins of men, women and children were found only one meter underground, stacked in two rows. They are believed to belong to family members of high priests. Waziri explained that excavations of the site in the 19th century had revealed royal tombs, but this latest discovery had yielded a collection of priest burials. The sarcophagi dated back to the 22nd dynasty founded around 3,000 years ago in the 10th century BC. Despite their age, black, green, red and yellow paintings of snakes, birds, lotus flowers and hieroglyphics that cover the coffins are still clearly visible. مصر امنه ومستقره وسالمه ومرحب بمواطنيكم اللي هم يجوا في مصر يجوا بسلام وهيغادروا بسلام واحنا هنبذل كل جهد عشان نحميهم Egypt's leadership and people welcomes visitors from all corners of the world Egypt the cradle of civilization land of the pharaohs Lovely beach, amazing mountains, wonderful views, and a crystal sea. Egypt. 
Egypt welcomes you with a beautiful smile. The mother of the world captures the hearts of people throughout history. Hundreds gathered in Lebanon today for a third day of protest against tax increases and alleged official corruption after the security forces made dozens of arrests. Crowds began gathering in front of the seat of government in the capital Beirut around the lunchtime, with many waving, billowing Lebanese flags. The protesters are demanding a sweeping overall of Lebanon's political system, citing grievances ranging from austerity measures to poor infrastructure. They have crippled the capital Beirut and threatened to topple the country's fragile coalition government. The protests which politicians admitted were spontaneous gripped all parts of the country. In a televised address, Lebanese Prime Minister Saad El Hariri said he understood their anger of the demonstrators and was trying to push through change. He called on his coalition partners to give a clear, decisive and final response to convince the Lebanese people and the international community that everyone has decided on reforms. Hariri gave them a 72-hour deadline to do so without directly threatening to resign. Foreign Minister Gibran Basil earlier warned the government's resignation could lead to something much worse. Turkish and Kurdish leaders accused each other of violating a U.S. broker truce in northeastern Syria even as it appeared to be taking hold on its second day today. The deal announced late Thursday is intended to halt a Turkish-led offensive against Kurdish forces launched on October 9th on condition they pull out of a safe zone on the Syrian side of the border. The offensive has killed dozens of civilians mainly on the Kurdish side and prompted hundreds of thousands to flee their homes in the latest humanitarian crisis of Syria's eight-year civil war. Today, Turkey accused Kurdish forces of violating the truce. Turkey wants to push Kurdish fighters away from its southern border by establishing a 30-kilometer deep safe zone on the Syrian side of the frontier. A delegation of Russian officials discussed with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in Damascus the need to de-escalate the situation in northeast Syria, Russia's foreign ministry said today. The ministry said in a statement that the discussion focused on the current situation on the ground in Syria in the light of rising tensions in the northeast of the country, adding that there is a need to take measures to de-escalate the situation and ensure security in these areas. Prime Minister... Boris Johnson fought attempts today to potentially further delay Britain's protracted departure from the European Union as MPs debated his divorce deal less than two weeks before the Brexit deadline. Parliament was holding its first today sitting since the 1982 Falklands War to discuss the terms of a last-ditch divorce agreement Johnson struck with European Union leaders Thursday. Opposition parties and Johnson's own Northern Irish allies have rejected their next forcing frantic government attempts to try to win the support of wavering MPs. The Prime Minister needs a clear vote in favour of his deal today to avoid triggering a law requiring him to ask the EU to delay Brexit for the third time. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson today vowed to stick to an October 31st Brexit deadline despite MPs winning more time to study a divorce deal he struck with Brussels. More details in the following report. The battle over Brexit spilled onto the streets of London today when tens of thousands of people gathered to demand a new referendum while lawmakers decided the fate of Britain's departure from the European Union. Protesters waving EU flags and carrying signs calling for Brexit to be halted gathered at London's Park Lane before a march through the centre of the capital to Parliament. Many protesters carry placards, some comparing Brexit to the election of US President Donald Trump. Some wore elaborate costumes with one group dressed as fruit and vegetables. 
The protesters from around the United Kingdom will march to Parliament as lawmakers prepare to vote in the first Saturday session since the 1982 Falklands War. Campaigners are confident that the number of people on the streets will revive a similar demonstration in March when organizers said one million people took to the streets. A rally this size would be among the largest ever in Britain. More than 170 coaches from around Britain were due to arrive in London, taking people to the march. Nine coaches left Scotland on Friday and four left Cornwall on England Western Tip earlier on. Well, that's all for tonight. Thank you for joining us. From our bulletin director for today, Amal Alewa, editor-in-chief Niveen Khalid, and this is Manali Biari. We wish you all the best and a very good night.